we doing the intro? Should we just be like, this is the Flesh and Blood podcast called the Attack Action Podcast, where we talk about Flesh and Blood as a podcast. I'm Colin. That's Blake. He's Taylor. We talk about fun, casual things, as well as uh, Flesh and Blood and sometimes lawn care. That's correct. I'm Taylor. Great intro, Colin. <coughs> Thanks for zipping that out there. We're going to go with it. We, You know what? I'm going to throw this out there to the audience. We've been trying to figure out the new intro to our podcast. We have a long history of changing the intro to our podcast. And now that we are slightly, have a slightly different configuration, we're trying to find what is us. So if you have any ideas or if you're like, don't fucking change it. I hate change. I didn't like it when Isaac left already. I'm hanging on by a fucking thread. If you change the intro, that could be it for me. One that's more time. <laughs> that would be fine. Hi, too. my name is Blake Meyer. Welcome to the Attack Action Podcast. <laughs> I'm here with my fellow battle bros, Taylor and Colin. We're here to tell you why casual f- flesh and blood could be the t- key to reinvigorating your love for the game. I thought you were going to say love life. And I was like, cool. FDA approved pending. Yeah. Uh, just use the <laughs> use the promo code attack action to get your first order free. From hams? From <laughs> I know. We're like he, the only hams. podcast who's not advertising for male sexual enhancement and or mattresses so we might as well start doing one of those because it's just not believable <laughs> it's not believable that any of us need it a mattress Taylor, it's your turn to do an intro we gotta get all three in here oh okay <laughs> um <clears throat> hi everyone this is our podcast it's called the attack action podcast i'm here with my best friends blake and Colin. Me and Colin look very similar. Blake and me also look similar. I'm their father. That's why. Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> Hi. Thanks, Dad. Hey, no problem, son. Let's go play catch. <laughs> but first, get me a beer. But what about my asthma? Dude, you're R- sounding like my real dad. Rub some dirt on it. Here, have a beer. <laughs> <clears throat> nice. I'm Thanks. a great dad. What a <laughs> what a functional family we have here. Uh, yes. Well, we I, oh, man, we all forgot to say hello, attacktioneers. That's the one thing I think we gotta keep. You know. Okay. On three. We've one, already decided that. Two, three. Hello, hello attacktioneers. attacktioneers. <laughs> perfect welcome nailed it you guys did it it. tight all right well today on this episode that you are experiencing now we will be talking about our journey to at and from the hype house and the many thoughts we now have about how we can just focus on having more fun uh, playing flesh and blood and how we can be in charge of that rather than letting someone else dictate what that looks like. So stay tuned. It's going to be hype Packed. fun. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be hype. We're so hype. It is a uh, early Saturday morning today, a week after the hype house. We've had plenty of time to recover. I think actually not really. I've been, very tired all week (laughs) it was a uh, both a relaxing time of playing lots of games but also that it it's tough to play just games for four straight days was it four days four days who's three and a half at least for sure friday saturday sunday okay yeah it's like three and a half but it was uh is it really four nights True. That's how the half works. Yeah. Nice. Well, we will uh, we will edit that portion so it sounds coherent. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, 
<laughs> I know how many days I was there. Do you? Uh, but before we do that, uh, we always like to check in because we're all friends here. Uh, how are you both doing? Blake, how are you doing today? Um. Well, I'm going to go to the Renaissance Fair in about an hour and a half. So that'll be an interesting layer of Hell this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It's supposed to be 91% rain today, so that'll be an also <laughs> fun layer of the Renaissance Fair. I've never been to a Renaissance Fair, so that'll also be another interesting layer of the Renaissance Fair. It's a, but, um, it's a very family-friendly and simultaneously very horny place, which oh, I feel great. is like, kind <laughs> of like a, a great vibe to hang out in, you know? Nice. Where young minds Hopefully go everyone. to blossom. <laughs> poured on and then that makes everything romantic wetter and better i guess yeah there you go Bo- both horny and family friendly here we go <laughs> 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 wait so you've never been to a renaissance fair no are you dressing up yeah i'm, I'm wearing some jeans and this shirt probably and a, a nice <laughs> what are they called wind break or water breaker sorry Raincoat. are you are, are you cosplaying you're not I think I'm going to watch play the first mm. time and then um, maybe dress up next time if it behooves me. It's Top, a very different could... experience if you dress up. Yeah. Uh, I recommend going as a Star Trek character who has uh, beamed in to this alternate reality and uh, you're trying to figure out what's going on. So... That's what I recommend doing is just showing up as a Star Trek character. That's that's probably the better move. The only costumes I have are like chicken suit onesie. So I don't think that'll work. <laughs> I thought that was going to be a longer list. <laughs> uh, chicken suit onesie and chicken suit onesie. Nice. All right. Well, we know what to ask Blake to wear the next time we need to dress up. <laughs> no. Nice. Well, that's fun. I I love the Renaissance Fair. Yeah. Lego Beast? I guess. Maybe. I don't know. For the family-friendly vibes. And, and the horny vibes. It can be both. They're not mutually exclusive. Yeah. <laughs> Weirdly enough. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I mean, I don't know. I've never been. So. It's fun. You can get... Like, You'll report back. Drunk on mead and have a giant turkey leg. And then like throw hatchets at uh at wood and get yourself like a chain. I'm always carrying around that giant turkey leg. Oh, hey. <laughs> uh, that's a family friendly vibe. <laughs> yeah. And and you can get yourself like a a chain mail knit bag for your D and D dice or like mm. a goblet or mm. a real sword. You know. All that stuff's awesome. I wonder if they'll have a replica of the uh, Arcanite skull cap. <laughs> oh, I mean, maybe it's it's mostly just a helmet. <laughs> mm. well, then you might be able to find, or you can find a guy that could make you one. You know, then I could pretend to win battle hardened battle hardened Braduxivix or whatever they're doing today. That's true. Congratulations to you. What about you, Taylor? Oh, um, yeah, been getting my bearings since getting back. Um, you know, we only have now nine weeks left of school, which is pretty tight. And I almost lost my, you can't, I don't know if you can probably see in the video quality, but, uh, I almost lost my right eye in a uh, city league basketball game on Thursday, uh, grabbed a rebound guy came in to swipe it. I turned, he got most of my face and I have like, like f- four or five finger claw mark around, Jeez. <clears throat> excuse me, around my eye. So that was like pretty intense. And, uh, I'm just, uh, yeah. That's what I've been doing. You got shredded? I, got, I almost got shredded, <laughs> but I had the extra D-React, so we were fine. 
And that game was crazy. We only had five guys that showed up to that game. So, uh, and one of those guys is a 60 year old man. And, uh, I'm the youngest person (laughs) on the team at 36. So I don't know how we did it, but we came from behind to win and, uh, it was great. And I'm still very tired from that evening of fun recreation. (laughs) Uh, so that's just kind of what's going on with me the battle hard in san francisco is coming up next weekend um and i need to figure out how to prepare for that so uh we'll see i still am like kind of on the fence about going like it was battle hardened la weekend off hype house then it's weekend off then or excuse me pro tour la etc etc you know so then I don't know, but it also might be like the last flesh and blood thing I go to for months. You got to go. So I feel like I just kind of need to go to just really be burnt out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we'll see. I, I think I'm going to go, but but yeah. So anyway, that's what's going on with me. Colin, what's happening in your life? You know, <clears throat> so much. It's crazy. Actually, no, I don't know. Um, <laughs> a, okay, well, coming back from the Hype House, we had an eventful trip. I Oh, uh, yeah. Blake I think, sent, honestly, this was... Well, Blake sent me a message like, hey, how much do you know about cars? And then I saw it like 45 <laughs> minutes later, and I was like, uh, none. Are you okay? And he was like, yeah, yeah, it's fine now. I'll ask Colin about it later. <laughs> <laughs> so Colin, ask me about what, cars now yeah what happened um, so we were driving down and honestly i we didn't see the eclipse but i feel like the timing was right around when the eclipse was supposed to be happening um and there's some traffic getting to the five and i was probably i wasn't like real close to the people in front of me but everyone was kind of packed in and all of a sudden i see like <clears throat> some like dust and like debris and a car swerves in front of me and there's like the biggest fucking like pipe on the road like it looked honestly i thought it was like the entire exhaust of a car like you know the muffler plus the giant pipe that's attached to it just across the entire road and of course you know i i swerve and i'm to you know, to this day i don't know if i swerved into it to make it worse or i avoided a worse part of it um, but just fully ran over it. Cause like it was a cro- it was like huge. I don't think there's any way I could have like not hit it. Um, unless I would just been driving much slower and had more time to react. But, uh, we run over it and I'm just like, great, I'm going to get a flat tire. We're going to have to deal with this. Um, but then everything seems fine. And I was just like, oh, okay. Uh, like my tire gauge doesn't come on. Nothing's acting weird. Just like, oh. Maybe it's fine, but then Blake, Blake and Jake, uh, were like, maybe we should pull over and just double check. So we pull over. I get out. My hubcap is missing, and, and Jake's like, "Oh yeah, that that must have been that thing I saw fly off." And I was like, <laughs> "Nobody mentioned anything about something flying off." Uh, and then we're looking at it, and there's just like a dent in in my wheel, and we're like, "Is that bad? What?" It, what is this part of the car called? Like, is it a wheel? Is that, that sounds wrong. Like, I guess it's a wheel. <laughs> it's like, it's a rim, but it's not a nice rim. I don't know. I don't know what the names are of these things. So we're like, who do we know that knows cars? So Blake, Blake takes to the most, uh, you know, obvious choice, uh, of knowledge, which is the flesh and blood community at large <laughs> and starts messaging <laughs> anyone we know. Uh, I Google it. Uh, which said the answer is maybe it's bad that you have a, a dent in the wheel. Also confirmed it was a wheel, you know, so that's good to know. Uh, <laughs> and then, so it was just like, you know, if it, if it's main, if it's retaining air pressure, it's probably fine. Uh, and it didn't look like it was getting low. So we're like, okay. And then angel shout out to angel. One of our local players is a mechanic 
like got him on the line and he kind of confirmed the same thing. He's like, if it's maintaining air pressure, you should be okay, but you should probably go to a tire shop. So we were like, okay, fine. Uh, we'll go, we'll just get back on the road and we'll see how it goes. Um, and we're driving, you know, there's no like wobbling or shaking or vibrating, which is like one of the other things they say is bad. Um, and then we are going like, you know, just far enough that we're like a good distance past the closest tire shop that I had looked up. <laughs> and then my tire gauge turns on and I was just like, shit, <laughs> it's, it's not maintaining air pressure. Um, so we look up the next closest one, which is about 10 minutes away. Uh, Joe's truck stop. I forget where we were. It was like El Banos area. Shout out to of. Joe's truck shop. <laughs> Dude. And I, that 10 minutes, I was just like, terrified that my wheel was just gonna like explode <laughs> or my tire is just gonna explode and it might you know it's gonna be bad i'm just like fuck okay what do we do can i rent a car and like drive it down and then come back and get my car later if we need like if this is gonna take too long blah 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 i don't know anything about tires or wheels um so we get there and it's just like a big ass truck stop and they've got a big truck like they do they wash trucks and then they do they fix tires for trucks um, and I just pull up to these two dudes in jumpsuits and I was just like, hi, I ran over a thing. Can you fix this? And he's like, yeah, pull it over there. So I pull it over there. Dude comes out with basically a nothos, like the biggest fucking hammer I've ever seen. And he's just like, turn your wheel. And I turn my wheel and he just fucking slams it as hard as he can, like three times. Uh, and then he's like, okay, you're good. <laughs> $10. And I was like, okay cool <laughs> is i was like and it looks i'm looking at it like i can almost not tell where the dent was in it i'm just like wow is that all it really takes tires and cars and wheels are crazy it's just a it's just a loose piece of rubber tightly strapped around a wheel and we hope it doesn't come off um so we got back on the road and uh you know an hour later i stopped worrying because it seemed like everything was fine but that was our uh that was our big adventure home. We had in and out for lunch. Uh, we didn't have to wait in line. It was great. Um, and uh, yeah, that's mostly my week. The rest of my week was catching up with work. Had a big client demo in office. They were very happy. I drank a little bit too much last night and didn't sleep great because I don't like sleeping when I'm drunk. But I had a nice time. Nice. Dope. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, all right. Well, any any other updates from the Battle Bro universe? I don't think so. Not at this time. All right. Now it's time for the flesh and blood attack action news update. This just in, the Attack Action Podcast is doing a special contest partnered with Fab Foundry. Isn't that exciting? Whoa. What okay. is it? So here's the deal, everybody. Uh, we didn't get enough submissions from y'all. Y'all are lacking and not making it fun for us. So we're going to extend the deadline. So we're going to go uh, another, by the time this comes out, another three weeks. So May 6th is going to be our deadline for this. Well, you're like, deadline for what? This is the first time I'm hearing about it. Excellent. Well, I'm going to tell you about it. So what we're doing is we want you, the listener, to record something uh well not something we want you to record something and send it to us and that something's theme is death match arena so we're talking hero intros hero catchphrases psas between matches uh stuff like that you know so if reinar's wife also is selling lizards on a stick in the stands you know we want to hear about that is dorinthia double parked with her chariot we want to hear about that sky's the limit those are your parameters try to keep it you know 
under five minutes. But if you want to go all out and do a 30 minute play of the Deathmatch Arena, we will play that on our podcast. So there you go. And then you go. after May 6th, uh, whatever the next podcast is, we'll have the winner. We'll, you'll win $50 in store credit for Fab Foundry to be able to use to buy flesh and blood cards. And we will then play your segment, your audio, whatever have you on the podcast. And it'll be awesome. We did this uh, for commercials, flesh and blood commercials a, last year, I think, or something like that. And it was a ton of fun. And a lot of people did a lot of cool stuff. And we want a lot of cool stuff from y'all. So this is your homework. <clears throat> I, as your father slash teacher slash best friend slash favorite podcast host, command you to do this homework. (laughs) That was that was strong. (laughs) I'm a strong man. The the bar for production quality couldn't be lower for this. You could just yell this into your phone. It could be ten seconds long. And it could be perfect. So don't yeah. feel like you need to add anything, you know, additional to this. Last time we did get some stuff with like music and voices. And yes, those were good. But I'm, one of my favorites was the Cavden, uh like infomercial where the guy just like kind of just like drawled out a bunch of stuff <laughs> really fast. And it was so hilarious. I think about it like every couple months. Um <clears throat> I'll just insert it right here. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so yeah, please uh, just let us know which what what you think. What does Olympia yell out when he hits somebody with his palm from? Like you know, I want to know what Olympia is cooking. He says, "I'm gonna go visit some armory leader and get a new palm from." <laughs> he walks up and says, "I'm dating your mom," and then he just beats you to death. Uh, great yeah there so, we yeah. go send us your stuff get 50 bucks it couldn't be easier it's free it's almost free money like if you get paid if you do a 10 second spot and you get paid 50 bucks how many how much is that per hour if you could make that your living like you'd be make so much money you'd be rich you'd be you our dad be 300 dollars an hour holy crap that's like, like a that. heli- <laughs> helicopter pilot fees should have been a helicopter pilot dude helicopters are dangerous be careful everyone all right that's it for our uh what was breaking that? news <laughs> yeah the breaking news uh, and now just to the regular news to the lighthearted uh and uh what do they call them like human no what do they call it when they do like fluff pieces on the news Fluff pieces, I guess. Yeah. Now to our fluff news. <laughs> human, human interest. I don't human know. interest stories. That's the one. That's what I was thinking of. Nice. <clears throat> All right. I don't think we talked about this last time, but it's been a little bit since this happened. But uh, Mr. Brian Go, Brigo, Brian Gottlieb, Brian Brigo Gottlieb has left Twitter uh, for his own sake, and honestly. It's about time because I was like, dude, why do you keep doing this to yourself? So I think we can all just be happy for him to find some kind of solace in not making uh, drama and then being mad about the drama. <laughs> um, I There's just a couple things I want to say about this just because it's something where I, I feel like it's not a hive mind. It's not a negativity thing, but like, Brian, in his goodbye thing, he said, if you've read between the lines of my post, it should be pretty clear that I view social media as an existential threat to society's existence, a truly malevolent and addictive force attacking the very core of how we interact as humans. Brother, what? Like, I think this is just something where it's like, some people are good at using social media. Some some people are cheerleaders in high school. Some people play um, 
basketball in high school. Some people play Dungeons and Dragons and some people are library nerds. And like, it, it's like, um, in this, you just didn't know how to use Twitter and, and how many CEOs or lead designers of Lego departments do you see going dunking on people that are like, I wish the Lego sets were a little better. And like, that's not a thing that we know 15 of them. We know Elon Musk, Musk dunks on people on Twitter, but it's because it's his platform it, or whatever we're trying to say. Blake, it was just an, Blake it, used air quotes for the audio listeners. Just, yeah. So we know when he said dunks. Oh, yeah, yeah. Dunks, <clears throat> finger quotes. It's just a thing where you're like, oh, I think it's a very negative thing that I had to use for my job. I think it was a, an idea where you're like, you're goading your fan base a little bit of, hey, why don't you guys just get good at um, drafting? And it was kind of cool when you were dunking on Jeff Hoogland. I, I think I talked about how cool that was. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. But whenever the the dunk comes on my behalf and it was like, oh, some of these people are just hoping the packs are a little better correlated at these high power tournaments, like high dollar tournaments that they've been practicing for. Oh, Nat, Nat's had a, a pack with two hollow majestics. That's impossible. How did that happen? Like you can't get good at draft. Obviously that's cherry picking that specific thing, but it is like, don't goad your fan base or another tweet that blew my mind that he put out there was like, somebody was talking about mana screw or whatever. And he was like, well, here, I know a game that's way better than that that has, doesn't have that type of thing. And you're just like being the kid in the back of the class who's like, let me tell you about this, brother, is like, it's interesting for us, the shit posters of the world that have podcasts, to do that kind of stuff. But when you're an official voice of this, when you are the lead voice, it's not official. You are the one. It is kind of like, don't be doing this because now your your Twitter contradicts with your your YouTube stuff. Your Twitter is going to contradict with people. Your your Twitter may turn people off. I know there was the thing of the breadcrumbs or whatever and like that getting misconstrued or whatever where it's like I, I would rather just have a voice that tells me when the new set comes out, when the new cards come out when the next tournament is not any kind of personal flavor with that. And I know some people were like, it's so amazing that we get the inner thoughts of this stuff, but ultimately all that does is murky, the waters gray, the black and white and and like, I don't want to say ultimately seven times in a row, but it is like, if I disagree with you on anything now, I'm kind of wondering like, do I want to spend my next $900 on the next set or this person truly thinks brutes are fine. Um, I'm, I don't think that I don't want to spend $900 of the new set. If there's not Reiner support, I'll do it for the other heroes instead. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yeah, I, I don't have a ton to say on this other than I, th I do think it's a good move for Brian. I think he is, uh, a very smart, intelligent person, and I've been enjoying the game much more since he became senior designer, lead game tester. He has like a hard title to remember what it is. Anyway, uh, but I think the community, kind of Blake touched on this, and I'll just echo this, like it's just really hard to know you're in a very big role in this game I care about very much and then try to separate what you then say as not representing that company when you're specifically talking about the game you know and like that I mean and this is why we have whole departments at companies that just handle social media, handle talking to the public and that sort of thing because I think you can get in a really weird space where you're like I'm a important person at this company, but I'm also like very accessible 
and I'm also a human being and I'm doing human being things out there on the internet, whether that's good, bad, in between, et cetera. And I can't, you know, it, it, it's really hard as an audience to then separate those things. But I mean, like we have to do that for basically all art in the world or else we would not be able to enjoy a lar large portion of it. Um, but it's like a little bit different when it's kind of real time like that. I hope I'm making sense. So right. I, I view it even though maybe some people are upset. Brian is off Twitter. I think it is more positive for him first, the game second and third, the community as a whole, you know, we won't get all riled up or <clears throat> get mad at somebody for adding Brian on Twitter or something like that. Uh, I mean, it, and it just happened the other day, like uh, the phone skin or case company D brand, like got a little, whoever was in charge of it, got a little too loose with their tweeting. Like they were on the line of, you know, we're fun company that has a fun company Twitter that says stuff, you know, and then they crossed the line and made fun of somebody's name who was like, hey, your product sucks. Right now I'm having a not great experience. And they were like, basically shut the fuck up. Your name is stupid. And people got really upset. And uh, one of my favorite tech YouTubers, uh, Marquise Brown had to like tweet out because he's partnered with them like, hey, this is like not OK. You could not do this sort of thing, blah, blah, blah. And so it was like this some sort of sort of Twitter drama. But like those things happen, you know, and like you don't want flesh and blood to have like, you know, making making fun of somebody personally like that to accidentally all of a sudden happen. Like even though you're like, I don't mean it to happen, but, you know, something like that could. So, yeah, ultimately, I think it's better. Yeah, I, I agree. It's better. I think not everyone's good at Twitter. Uh, not everyone has to be good at Twitter. Totally. And social media isn't always the best thing uh, because it's what people make of it. And people aren't always the best versions of themselves, especially anonymously online. Um, yeah. I think, you know, what I would love to see is like designer diaries of like, this is how we think about the game when making it yeah. and less like reactionary knee jerk things to people making criticisms, which is 80% of what Twitter is, is people just criticizing each other. You don't need to respond to any of that. You can just, you know, if you want to have discourse, you can try to do that, but be prepared for a lot of energy for very little payoff most of the time. And then I think the other aspect of that is don't try to make jokes at your, you know, player's expense. Uh, and then also try to like make serious tweet, you know, like there are ways of telling jokes on Twitter. There's formats. There are, you know, kind of signals. There's kind of a style that you can do. But when you just state things matter of factly that aren't funny uh, and then say they're just a joke, like you're like, well, that <clears throat> if you have to explain it, it's not funny. And now you just pissed everybody off. So it is it is better. There's there's companies, plenty of companies that have very great Twitters. Wendy's is a great one. You know, they just like you can be funny and be a company and like both kind of troll and engage your uh your player or your, you know, your customer base and you know, Brian Gottlieb's just not that person. If like what I want is like Cole Worley style, like engagement and discussion. And like, you know, if you don't know Cole Worley, he's a board game designer, write some of the best designer diaries on games. It's like, these are the books I'm reading about, you know, this space that I'm in when I'm designing this game. This is how I thought about, you know, I want to make a trick taking game and these are the, this is kind of the history of trick taking games, blah, blah, blah. It was just, it's the most informative, interesting inside this dude's brain. Look, that's what I'm interested in. 
How do you design flesh and blood? Not just like you guys need to get better and like you haven't figured anything out. And it's always it was always just a bit condescending and maybe it was trying to be a joke, but like it just doesn't feel that way because you don't know how to do the tone. So I think it's better for everybody. I think it's better for him. I'm glad that he decided to do that for himself. I don't think he needed to make a big statement about it, but sure, whatever whatever makes him happy. Uh, I think that should be that should be fine. But yeah, well. Uh, We'll see how long that lasts and when his triumphant return to Twitter occurs. <laughs> Herald of Triumph. <laughs> uh, speaking of other Twitter announcements, uh, Blake. Zachary Bunn is Zachary done with this game? He did it. He said it. Perfect. We, yeah, that was the, not the joke way to say it, but. It's interesting. I think Team Covenant was a, an entry point for a lot of people because they have other content. And I remember watching their spoiler videos being like, oh, why is there a Team Covenant promo? Oh, they must have a sweet deal. And like, there was a thing where when you saw those Team Covenant promo, uh, promos, you're like, oh, I don't have this Sir the Wildwood or whatever the hell it's called. And I, I think he was also probably the team captain or main person behind one of the main teams so that'll be interesting to see how that works for them or whatever but i think we're getting to where flesh and blood is old enough now where we're getting these are the people who are the old guard and maybe now moving on and not because oh the game sucks or they made a decision i disagreed with it may just be five years playing a game is enough for me and now it's time to do something else or there's a major life milestone in my life where i have to say goodbye yeah i mean zach and steven team covenant 100 uh, percent was my entry point you know like uh, i've talked about it on the podcast before uh 80 something episodes ago but you know, I, I can remember them previewing the game for the first time and being like, nah, that doesn't look cool. And then them doing it a, a, a second time and being like, huh, maybe this is cool. And then, you know, buying into the game and and watching a lot of their videos and stuff, because I definitely watched a lot of their content elsewhere. I watch their content much less now, and I think its format has changed for me what i'm looking for nowadays but that's that's just a personal anecdote but i'm excited for zach bun that he's gonna take this next step he's i think he said he's going to have a child and a little zachary jr uh my advice to zach as a man without children. The child's name is Viserae, okay? Like, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I was going to make the joke that he could name his kid Taylor after me, or just in general, because he loves Taylor Swift, and it's a great any gender name. So, there nice. you go. Taylor Viserae, Viserae Bun. Ooh. TVB. TVB. Nice. Uh, yeah, now, shout out to Zach Bun. It's a big... Thing to have to do that and uh, sacrifice something you really love for another thing that you really love. Um, and that's, it's heartwarming. The, uh, you know, trying, you know, that is such a hard thing. I've had friends who've, you know, have, I know people who've had difficulty in having children and, you know, it's, it's very wearing on the, the people and you know the couple and their relationship and so you know that's that's awesome i, lo I love that it's for a, a good happy reason um because you know when you like i think we heard but i was busy doing something when it was announced so i didn't know that it was because of he was having a child so i was excited to hear that team covenant was also my entry point and uh you know while I don't watch as much anymore, I think that's mostly because I just don't have time. You know, at, at the time when I, I found them, I was just staring at my computer all day, every day, hoping the world wouldn't end. Um, and uh, now I'm wondering if that was the right thing to hope for. 
<laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, definitely a, a bright light in a time of, of kind of in a scary time is hanging out on TC streams and chatting with people and watching a couple dude the playing games and having a good time, which is the same reason I like the attack action podcast. Cause I was listening to a couple of dudes playing games, having a good time when I was at home, not able to do those things. So, uh, shout out to Zach and his family. Zach Bunn was a bright light, and due to his uprising, there will be a new dynasty. <laughs> Perfect way to end that. Great job. <laughs> Let's talk fucking spoilers, everybody. Let's get Boom. into the flesh and blood part of our podcast. Uh, oh, I'd... oh I, I already played a blue this turn, so what am I going to do? <laughs> Yeah, which is wild, right? Like that is okay. Okay, yeah. Oh, I play. I'm transcending. <laughs> oh, that was you transcending, not getting hyped at the Renaissance Fair. <laughs> oh Could be both. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> both would be hyped at the Renaissance Fair if that was happening. Uh, <clears throat> the I'm enjoying how they're just trickling cards out to us. You know, I. I I enjoy that much more than like here's the weekend and it's too many cards to keep up with you know and we're getting little pieces of the puzzle and stuff. What is wild is how many feet are in this set. Like how is it? Like they must have said like Sam Yang probably was like, what if we just had like a lot of feet in this set? Wouldn't that be like a funny thing to happen on the side? And everybody was like, Haha, yeah. And then now there's just feet everywhere. I don't think we've seen the last one. Anyway, <laughs> let's talk about actual spoilers and stuff right now. Uh, there are 400 Marvels in this set, and they're <laughs> all yeah. they're all insane, and I can barely read any of them. Don't need. But to. <laughs> the clear best one is as soon as i can find it oh yeah is homage to ancestors if you look under the table there's maybe like a little tanuki or little uh chow chow dog or something that's the best one in my opinion based purely on animal potential dog vibes you know me every card in every set that's the best has like a little a little fluffy with it so there you, know you what go else is under that table Feet. And you Some gain feet. one. It's like a sigil. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, they're feeding that one too. Everybody's freaking bear doggies are just out here barking. Dude, not everybody wears shoes like you, okay, Taylor? It's just socks. <laughs> just socks. That's all I'm asking. They 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 get dirty. Then you just That's gotta right. wash them. No, the, the most waterproof layer is your skin. So. As I said in our Discord uh lss got the note that we liked more marvels and they gave us more marvels uh and they're all of a style that's really really cool i haven't been paying too closely to the artists on these but i feel like a lot of them are artists that i haven't seen uh in the game before which is really yeah. cool i think there's a lot of uh, japanese artists coming in yes. you know this is a very big it's a very big business move uh, for, on all fronts, uh, premiering uh, the game in Japan in the Japanese language with a very heavy-handed uh, Japanese styling on these cards and art, and it's it's just really dope. They just haven't done this style before, and I'm excited to see not just like a couple cards, but like a lot of cards that are coming in with like cool art you know like it, it makes me think of like eleanor's art and how just strikingly different it was compared to everything else um and in this one they just they have a ton of it and they all look gorgeous so hopefully these marvels are not crazy expensive because they are really cool um i don't understand the power level of any of them yet it feels <laughs> it's gonna be weird having so many blues in your deck uh and then you get little bonuses for that. And then you have a bunch of cards that don't block because they're inner chi cards now. But still, uh, it looks cool. Everything looks beautiful. 
I don't mind the feet so much, you know, droplet, just a big, strong foot right in the frame. Um, it's, it's fine. It's totally fine. People, no, the there's nothing. Has taught me that people like feet. So yeah, this is there's just nothing strong wrong. Marketing. There's just nothing wrong with feet. It's just a strong take for this <laughs> set to be also the foot set. You know what I mean? That's all I'm saying. Yeah. No, it's fair. A, a non kink shaming sex positive show. And even if this is a non sexual thing for you, that's great too. Uh, anyway, <laughs> cause the default is that it is <laughs> anytime somebody sees a foot, they're horny for it. Cause it's on Dude. the internet. Let's go to the Ren fair. Not a lot of feet there because they wear boots and stuff. So, you know, be prepared for that. (laughs) The only thing that I can complain about, because I can always complain about things, is like we don't have any attacks or non-attack actions for like any of our freaking classes yet. So we are like 15 to 16 cards in and I still have no idea how these people are going to attack at all. Which I think is like that's I think that's the interesting part of this spoiler kind of, you know, pre spoiler season is that they're giving us a lot of information, but also almost no information at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. Like these are all underwhelming cards, but seem extremely (laughs) necessary. You know what I mean? You're like, cool. Is shuffling good? You shuffle know, is a crazy <clears throat> shuffle keyword. is good because you're gonna put all your inner chi cards in the bottom of your deck, and then you're just gonna be like, well, now they're all scattered throughout. Like totally, but like, like in draft, like, like if you see shuffle and transcend early, that's not good. Hmm. But if you see it late, maybe it's too late. You know what I mean? So it like it's like a one of card that has to come out at like the right time. So that's kind of interesting. All of these cards don't block the I mean the question I think on everybody's mind is like, well, how A, how many of these in a draft deck should I be running? And B, how many in a CC deck should I be running? Cuz that seems like quite a bit of no blocks to then activate my hero ability, which normally when people have a hero has an ability that is like activated like that, you want to do it as often as possible, you know? So if I have to like dirtle around and transcend and then shuffle my deck and hopefully I get my chi, like how many of those do I need? And then is my, the rest of my card pool and my hero ability making up for the fact that I then have eight no blocks in my deck. You know what I mean? That dirtle around and gain me one health or give you minus one on your attack or me plus one or shuffle my deck, you know, like what, how do I, how do those work out? Yeah. The other thing, what last thing before I let you guys go is I hope it plays into a lot of what Blake has to say a lot of times is that due to their modularity that you will be able to have like cool plays you can do, not just like, uh, you know, get out your calculator and do the math on what the value is. That makes sense. Okay, go. Everybody yeah, else the talk. music. Let the music play. Uh, also, Blake, we have four attack actions that they that they did reveal <laughs> oh my goodness they, yeah, those are all the mist the misties right i don't know yeah. if there's any yeah. which one. The, the the actual yeah. favorite card which is going to be like oh really like a way to not not really understand anything that's going on i really like battlefront bastion mm. because i think it's the perfect card for these three in limited of like not only does it act as a popper but it acts as block the first dagger and it prevents the second dagger or mm. block the first whatever Zen's going to have maybe block 
one of his tigers later, which is pretty cool. Yeah. I like the uh, promo full art on those as well. Yeah, that's way cool. cooler with the tiny text box. I love what did the, somebody yeah, love call this? Text box. Fendal's Defending Spirit or something yeah. like that? I think so. Did, yeah. yeah, let's never say that again. It's Bastion <laughs> Battlefront. Battlefront <laughs> Bastion. Yeah, so it's it's looking pretty hype. The latest uh, spoilers, unofficial maybe, uh, leaked perhaps uh, as they are displayed in a dude's hand, uh, perhaps at uh, Star City Games Atlanta. I guess, I'm sorry, a person's hand. It could be anybody's hand. Uh, not to gender <laughs> the hand that I'm looking at. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we have a couple Olympia. We have an Olympia and a Victor specialization. What What was wild was that they weren't in a person's foot. That would have been oh my the god! That would have been yeah. so funny. God, that's a missed Holy situation. Dude. Okay. Um, anyway, go go ahead. Let's read these cards because they are tasty. Some somebody. Okay. Well, I'll just read them. V- visit the Goldman and State is the Victor specialization. You may only have this card in your deck. Here is Victor. Create a gold token. Then, if you control three or more gold, not tokens, so that that shield helps. Create that many might tokens and go again. It's good. Blue block three messed up. Also, can we just c- call him Victor Goldman now? I think that's funnier. <laughs> like Goldman. Goldman. Yeah. <laughs> Victor saw, Goldman, uh, attorney at law. <laughs> I saw at the Battle Hard in Atlanta when they are doing like the the graphic for when your heroes are about are like this is Dromai versus Victor. It was just zoomed in on the horse's face and I'm like, Hell yeah. Let Dude. let us go. That's great. Let's keep that up. And then the Olympia specialization, visit the Golden Anvil says you can as an additional cost to play this, destroy as many gold as you control control and then equip that many weapons and or equipments from your inventory. This is wild. Does not have oh. go again. This is wild. You just like get to equip new equipment. Like what the what the hell? <laughs> like any equipment or weapons you can put in your deck. Break your mage master boots and then re-equip. So yeah, so it's like Valiant you, you want to run all temper first, so everything breaks, or things that have activated abilities that you break, and then you're just like, and then I just put a bunch of new, I just change clothes. I have a costume change mid fight. I'm Olympia, greatest deathmatch arena fighter of all time. Uh, check out my new hat and pants. And he's like, Damn, <laughs> check out my new hat. I, I know, right? So like. You can use Crown of Providence twice or Balance of Justice twice. Or can you? Can yeah, you run you can, multiple. I guess you yeah, can run three copies. You can Olympia's deck just got like quadruple the price. <laughs> you can go uh use parry blades, block with them, break them. Yeah. Now you have hatchets, you know? You can Courage of Blade hold twice. It's just crazy. You can dude, say, Colin, you are rolling your eyes. I can just tell you hate warriors. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude. <laughs> of all the warrior, I like I like Olympia. I found out I really what I really hate is Dawn Blade, uh, and specifically paired with Dorinthia. Like that's that's really what my problem is. That's good okay. to come to that realization. Yeah, I think Dawn Blade's just messed up. You're just like it's just so punishing. Um, whereas like everyone else is just like, yeah, I sneak in some damage, but it's not like, oh, you've just totally lost the whole game. If you can't stop me now, you're just like, well, this, this is annoying as fuck. But Olympia, I, I like, I like what he's got going on. I think I would, I would even deign to think maybe I would consider, uh, the possibility that I might engage him on a playing level. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you can block with one of your parry blades and then equip the freaking shield that nobody runs. Or start with the shield, freaking yeah, block break with it. it. And then put on, <laughs> grab another sword. Dude, totally. draw swords. <laughs> it's, so, it's so cool. It's the best flavor win we've had in a li- like recently. Uh, 
and it's uh, so unique. It gets me hyped as well for Olympia. Dude. So cool. Start with Courage of Blade Hold and then just put on another Courage of Blade Hold. <laughs> yes. My weapons are free. Break. Yeah, and you could get another one. Which is awesome. Goliath gauntlet breaks. Ooh. Now your wage gold's for nine. Ooh, refraction bolters. You just like I just put on my valiant it's like I I get good go again and then I put on Valiant Dynamo to block the rest of the time. Yeah. This is wild. This is so good. I'm ex I'm gonna be so mad when someone does this to me, but it's also <laughs> so cool. <laughs> I mean They gotta I'm, have the gold, you know? Like Yeah. I'm I'm definitely the resident loving to put my clothes back on player playing Arachne, you know? Uh I take so my I'm hat pretty off. psyched. I put my hat back on. I yeah, totally. Yeah. My pants take take my pants off, put my pants back on. Take my pants off, put them back on. Yeah, these are going to be fun. I'm excited to see maybe a few more support cards. Uh maybe Betsy's going to have a a beat with giant log card I thought, or you, I thought know. you said feet with giant yeah betsy's yeah. feet that's what the card's just gonna be called and v- she just visit the kicks. mill and she gets her her <laughs> hammer gets plus two for the rest of the game cost six give me wild love it all right well that was the news time to is get hype. Is it time to get hype? Let's get hype. All right. We have all entered the Hype House Arena. Uh, thank you for joining us here. We are welcoming of you and all your stuff. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Colin, uh, what exactly is the Hype House? All right, I'm so glad you asked, you know, because clearly you have trouble understanding things. <laughs> no. Um, uh, all right, the Hype House. The Hype House was really, it was really a social experiment where, you know, we sought to propose the hypotheses that if you were to uh, play Flesh and Blood uh, for an extended period of time, in a home style uh, residence uh, building, if you will, uh, with a group of people whom you were already acquainted with, or at least, at least mostly acquainted with. Uh, and then the, I guess the hypothesis is, if you do all that, will you just have a shitload of fun? And I'm here to tell you everyone that that is the case. You too can hype house because hype house results are a hundred. It's like a hundred percent results on this, this study that if you go get together a big group of friends, at least eight, so you can draft your pants off. Uh, you can just have the best time. So we decided to test this out. We were like, you know what? You know, what's really fun when you go to a tournament and you rent a house and you're all there with your buds. And then you're like, let's stay up late and draft. Let's do this. Let's play this game, blah, 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 blah. And then then really the next day you're like, oh, God, we got to go to like the tournament. I got to get up early. It's so stressful. I got to make my deck list, blah, blah, blah. And then you go back to the house later that night and you're like, yeah, let's have more fun. Like We're like, what if we just cut out the tournament part and just had fun the whole weekend? Um, and that was, that was what we sought out to do. So we, we invited everyone who was a Patreon member and some of our friends and all of our co-hosts. And, uh, we found a place by committee. We picked the most central location between our Northern and Southern, uh, regiments of the attack action podcast, uh, co-hostery. And, uh, that landed on Sacramento, beautiful Sacramento where, it was very cold that weekend, but still uh, very, te- very nice. Technically, we were in Elk Grove, just so. Is that a city? It is. Oh, okay, I thought it was just a neighborhood. All right, we were in Elk Grove, beautiful Elk Grove, California, which yep. I now know is a city. 
a proper right city. by uh, Monterey Trail High School. They have two Costco's <laughs> for some reason. Maybe one's not in Elk Grove. I don't know, but there was two co- Costco's equidistant from our place. Um, so yeah, so that was a hype house. We've been planning this for a long time. It unfortunately landed two weeks after Pro Tour, which made the past month very flesh and blood focused uh, and a lot of time uh, preparing for all those things. But yeah, it was it was a really great trip, and we're going to talk about it now. We ended up having nine people, which turned out to be a pretty good number. Um, uh, and yeah, what 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 did we do? <laughs> what I, did I we do at the hype house? The thing that I took away from this that was super interesting and fun was like, oh, this is what games could be if you're just like what could we do to have the most fun in the next two hours and like all those people are vested in it there's no uh, another layer of this this felt like a bachelor party but nobody was getting married and like usually whenever you're hanging out with your friends whether they're flesh and blood people or they're people you have known for years there's a layer of like i have to get back to the kid i have to my my wife is gonna meet me for dinner but like when you guys are all company moved to six hours away from our house there aren't those distractions maybe there's somebody where you got to go eat breakfast with shout out to patrick (laughs) but um there is a layer of like there's at least eight people at all times that are a captive audience and so if it's like hey i just want to go run does anyone want to go run sure there's some people that went and ran we you want to go walk to the beer cave you want to go play a very esoteric board game about trading card games yeah there's at least four people that want to do that do you want to play a draft do you want to do a cube and like drafting cube alternate form of stuff pick up games like these are all experiences of flesh and blood i haven't had before because normally i show up to an armory normally i show up to a pro quest a road to a national a battle harder or a calling and all of those things are very regimented of we're all paying. I need to have a good experience because I just paid $75. Uh, where's my Where's my box? Where's my mat? That's cool. But like, here's a way to have fun with the game because you just want to have fun. And that's something that I think is worth it if you're at home being like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, oh, we're going to build a cube. Somebody put a lot of effort into that. Thank you for doing that. But, like, that cube was so fun to do a couple times because, like, oh, you want to just do some random flesh and blood? It doesn't matter how you do it. And it's just what would the cards look like if if three heroes were assassins and two heroes were shadow rune blades? And, like, I think it was interesting every single time of, like, um, what do you guys – do you guys want to do this? And, and it was a – not a one up, but it was a, is everyone, is everyone down to do this? And like, if you got seven people and someone's eating pickles, it's like, we'll finish your pickles and that guy's going to take a shower and then we'll all do it. Like, like seven people was kind of like majority rules, even though there was nine of us, it was like, as long as the ball's rolling, I'll, okay, I'll finish my pickles and then yeah, let's do the double, double. Just one more around. pickle. Come on. Just one more pickle. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, I think both of you have nailed a lot of the stuff. Um, It just was a great example of how much more this game has to offer to us in terms of pure entertainment. You know what I mean? Like the only real you know quote unquote sanctioned things we did was like do one booster draft you know what i mean and like the other stuff we did was things we made up ourselves that we thought would be fun like uh we took like blake mentioned we took uh oliver and yeechin's edgelord cube we got the list from them and me shout out to patrick and levi shout out to patrick he put a lot of work into making sure we had a lot of those cards. Um, And we put that cube together and we drafted that a couple of times, which was so fun. Like uh, 
it, it, it just is cool to get to draft flesh and blood in just an alternate cubed format mm -hmm. because you realize how much there is to explore in the limited environment. Like we're just, we're throwing assassins and shadow rune blades together, you know? And it's like kind of asymmetrical. Get your AB now, bro. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> that you know, there's in the field. <laughs> yeah. There's like a lot of weird interactions and stuff that we just haven't seen before in that environment and you know back to 15 card packs and you know and you realize like man if i were to you start thinking about the design of that and you're like man what other stuff could we do you know with a cube and what kind of cards or synergies do i want to have in there and have my own experience so that's like mm -hmm. really inspiring uh we did in classic battle bro fashion i think blake you came up with this idea because there's nine of us uh, it was hard to just have like a eight person draft sometimes. So Blake was like, well, we'll just do all nine. And what we'll do is we will do two nine person drafts back to back of heavy hitters. You will draft two decks and then we'll do like a, a knockout tournament. So, you have one deck you drafted and you sit down across from your opponent and you secretly choose which one you're going to play, both of you. And then you play that deck. And then if you lose, you can't play that deck anymore. So you got to play your other deck in the next round. And so you're trying to like, you know, stay alive basically until the end or whatever. And we mm -hmm. did this fun thing where we took the extra packs. It actually worked out math wise really well, where everybody had two packs to represent your lives basically. And you, and because heavy hitters has a wager, so you were wagering your pack versus the other person's pack. And so if you won, you got both packs. Um, so that was also like, and that was just really f fun. It was like yeah. a fun idea. Like, and it was cool to draft just twice in a row, yeah. you know, like see two different decks, build two different things. And because there were like nine people, your deck was like a little bit more tuned up. So that was fun. And it, it was, it was wild. And it was a classic battle bro tournament moment as yeah. well. I think Blake, Jake and I kind of like talked our way into that. Right. I, I feel like we were talking about how we could do that. I, I definitely did 61% of it, but the other 39 was y'all for sure. So. Yeah. No, I mean, was, I think, but we were talking, we were like, oh, yeah. you know, it'd be cool. Cause like in, you know, you and I both like fighting games too. And like they do double, you know, double eliminations. Like you, you can lose once and then we, then you're in the kind of the losers bracket. And then if you lose again, you're, you're out of the tournament. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, so I think that, that was just like a natural thing from us, like just talking and hanging out and being around each other playing this game all weekend and we're like oh that would be fun like and then we oh we can draft twice in a row oh yeah and then like you know then we just started calling it 2xko which was a joke about the new riot games uh fighting game that's called 2xko that nobody else got but <laughs> it was funny i certainly uh, did not get that yeah <laughs> oh. but but you know, I, it, I i think it came apart because like Taylor and his infinite wisdom was like, you don't ever really want to play the third one unless mm. you've won the first two. And that's kind of yeah. what unlocked that in my mind of like, instead of, do you want to play the, do you want to play the O2 match? Well, you just can't because you lost both your lives. Yeah. Yeah. Take and that option away. <laughs> what was funny too, is we did the edge Lord cube the last night in that exact scenario happened. Like, Everybody who was like 1-1 one, one or, you know, 0-2 uh, was just like, nah, I don't need to play this third game. But the two, uh, two O's were like, yeah, we're going to play. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And it, it was it was so fun. Like, <clears throat> one, I think, in a nine-person draft with the new 14-card packs, like, felt better to all of us, I think. Yeah. Universally, we were like... This feels better. I had a little more opportunity to stay open. I feel like people were able to kind of read their seed a little bit more. Um, and it was, 
there was just like a couple extra cards that made everything feel I don't know. It just felt more fun than a regular eight person draft. And then just doing a second draft right after that, it was like you could just learn so much about drafting because, you know, some of us haven't even drafted that much before. Like, I think Thomas is his first time drafting Flesh and Blood at all this weekend. So, like, you know, he was learning a ton. And I've, I can probably count on three hands how many uh, uh, times I've drafted before. So. <laughs> You know, it was it was really cool to be able to do that. And then there was also the notion like, well, in the second draft, I could just troll everyone and just yeah. like draft only the best cards for anything and just hope that I never have to put a deck together with it, uh, which I don't know if anybody actually did. It seemed like everyone did kind of try to put a working deck together. Um, and then there was like, okay, well, which deck do I start with? Do I start with my strong deck or do I start start with my like maybe weaker deck or the deck that I'm less... Uh, you know, familiar with the hero and abilities on. Um, and I think, you know, definitely up for debate whether I, in my mind, I was like, I was just like, Oh, we follow FGC rules. Like if you win, you can't change your, your, your hero. But if you lose, you obviously change your hero, um, which I think some people didn't like. Cause they're like, Oh, well now like they know what I'm doing. Um, but like, it didn't really give anyone an advantage. I don't think, uh, for the most part because like the the if you're playing someone who lost like they don't have a choice but if you're playing someone who won and still has two decks you know maybe but i can see an argument either way i just thought it was like i was like oh yeah that makes sense like the winner keeps going so we kind of it's like a king of the hill uh you know knockout format but you know just just doing all that it was just like so much fun i think like one of the most natural things to come out of us all being together and yeah. just kind of highlighting the fact like what what can happen when you just have a bunch of people who love the game and love you know playing can can naturally just come up with to like create our own fun which i i think is like the biggest takeaway from the whole weekend is that we don't we don't need anybody else you know to dictate what our engagement with this game is and where the fun exists. Like, I think, you know, the, the idea of play in general is, is not something that someone else can like give to you. You know, it's like if, if we're like engaging with like the actual idea of like play and playing and, you know, uh, that whole concept, like that's, that's us like putting ourselves into something and like, you know, I don't know. It, it just felt so good <laughs> doing it. And we were just like, wow, this is really fun. Like just the whole part, yeah. of the, the whole segment um, of the 2XKO knockout tournament was just like, we we're just like, yeah, we did it. We, <laughs> we came up with something that was really fun. Yeah. Everybody had a good time. And just like, I, I, I can't wait to do that again. And then the funny, I mean, the, the funny thing with the packs and like your lives or whatever, it was really, it just became a pack per win, but it was just a fun way of like doing that, which uh, I think everyone enjoyed who got to keep any packs. Unlike some of us. But then for some reason, our dumbass got the case that had no legendary in it. Yeah. That's so true. that I was, was just like, thanks that. a lot. Yeah. No Marvel, no legendary. Yeah. Yeah two coal foil Miller's grindstones though. <laughs> and then the yeah. other thing you guys came up with was yeah. living lurkers. Yeah. So, totally. Probably the thing we're most famous for. Yeah. We, I mean, <laughs> we co-opted it from Zane and then we co-opted Zane to the podcast so that we could say that we came up with it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He did do it, but yeah, uh, a wrongly called underdog, the underdog blitz blitz oh they play blitz oh, okay well they can have yeah, they underdog blitz. blitz we play living lurker cc because that's what everybody really wants uh if you're unfamiliar check out our uh reaction step episode where we do a tier list uh it'll it'll peer up here maybe maybe i'll remember that what time we're over it? there uh, uh it's <laughs> we're, yeah. So basically what it is, is anybody who in the classic constructed meta, any legal hero who has under 100 points. So those are all the legal heroes. So for this tournament, you could play uh, Olympia, 
Arachne, Riptide, Levia, uh, All the bright lights Pr- heroes. Prism, Prism Max, Vincent. Dashio, uh, Teclo Vossen. Yeah. So all of those heroes. Um, and we just did your classic Swiss rounds cut to top four. And in our previous, we're going to have to do a new meta tier because we got mm. new heroes. And, and we uh, learned some pl- things. And we learned some things. Riptide, it was, spoilers, it was all Riptide finals. Riptide is the scourge of the Living Lurker format. It's broken. Nerf he is the Riptide. Lurker. I mean, it's in, it's in the name. It's his should have known. Yeah. Okay. So uh, <clears throat> there was this moment. This is like a highlight for me. It might not hit as well on the podcast as it does in the house, but uh, <laughs> we're like starting round one and Isaac is leaning over to Levi to get some like information, you know, and I'm like, hey, you can't talk to the guy next to you about like what's going on. Like that's my real testing partner, you know, and Thomas just go like starts yelling like you're all alone down here in the depths. <laughs> We're all lurkers. You're alone. You know, just started yelling out. of That's how we do it down here, brother. That was a <laughs> yeah. crazy moment because like maybe Thomas was a little more low key the night before. <laughs> and just I was like, oh, this this guy, this guy is legit. He I've been a bit I've, juiced up that day. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he was definitely having uh, the Pacificos or the Modellos or the <laughs> Stellas like at 10 a.m. Uh, and I fell out of my chair laughing <laughs> and like peed my pants a little. It was so funny. Which it was such a great moment. Maybe threw you off, and that's why <laughs> you didn't win round one or whatever. It's because that moment. Uh, there's some other things, but. Oh, okay. <laughs> but it was a, it's a really, f- that was a really fun format to play. The games were all really tight. Uh, Patrick, I think, sh- I feel like should have won that tournament, but he just like did not get the pairings he needed. He played uh, Mechanoid Max, and mm. that deck was scary AF. <laughs> Opening hand card I've talked the most shit about in my life. I was like, Smashing performance. Oh, yeah. Blow up his hyper driver. (laughs) He's behind the whole game. We replay it. Draw smashing performance on turn two. We replay it. He builds the mechanoid. Draw the draw the smashing performance. I I don't (laughs) you're like you're like, this just kills you, right? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Blake played uh Levia and uh did really well. Blake made top four. Yeah, Levi is also very strong. Yeah. It was interesting, too, because I played Isaac for the, like, it was his, does he go 4-0 and through Swiss or not? And it was, I was 2-1, so I was like, could I lose and get out of the top four? But I went first, and, like, Arsenal passed, and I don't think Isaac had an arrow. Spoilers, we heard that one before. Um, Isaac, <laughs> didn't, <laughs> Isaac didn't have an arrow or an attack, so... He couldn't do anything, and then it was like just steamrolled from there, and it was like, oh, I think that was the one time Isaac blew it over the weekend, and it felt really good to just unload all my frustration from the other times Isaac beat me throughout the weekend on that (laughs) that one Riptide game. Totally. That's great. Yeah, it it was really fun, and it was like cool because for all of us, everybody was bringing their pet deck, you know, like Jake is like the world's greatest Vincent player randomly. And I didn't know that sitting it down across from him. And I was like, Oh fuck, this game is hard. You know? <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, Levi's there and you, everybody knows he's broken on riptide and you know, it was, it was great. It was, uh, my least favorite format of the weekend because of uh my own personal competitive reasons Mm. and uh that's my fault but i think it's still a really fun format and would play it more mitch brought betsy and was like slapping his belly and uh betsy just wagering overpower anothos like over and over again i was like this is so funny like i did i did not (laughs) I forgot that like all those cards just say next attack or guardian attack. And he was just yeah. like, 
all right, Anotho's coming in for like 10 over power and, you know, wagering these things. It was just like, <laughs> dude, that's so funny. I loved it. Um, he actually, he did okay with it, I think. Um, but yeah, it was it was a great format. I think it, I'm hoping that we can kind of spread the gospel of living lurkers. I think it's a really fun way to engage with the game and kind of like, you know, just mix it up because it gets tiring going into armory every single week and everyone's just like, Oh, I'm playing the most overpowered deck in the format yeah. again. Um, yeah. and I think one, it, it lets you explore another hero. Uh, it's cool. You know, some people were like really built a deck for this format, which I thought was cool. I, I didn't have time to do that. So I just brought prism, which like, I was like, yeah, it'll be good, but I didn't do that well. But I think, you know, building for those heroes in mind is a very different experience than like trying to just capture yeah. the entire, uh, the entire available hero pool or like what the meta is and having to like, uh, kind of hedge for those kind of outlier heroes. It's like, no, these are the heroes. This is what they can do. I need to worry about, I think these are the strong ones. Not knowing fully is also really cool. It's just like, I'm worried about these heroes, so I should do this. But yeah, doing <clears throat> doing all that I think was great, um, and was super fun to hear everyone like you know what what decks they were bringing, what they thought, and uh, yeah, Riptide definitely <laughs> definitely OP on the day. So we'll, <laughs> we'll have to we'll have to revisit it and see see what it does. But I'd love to get uh, anyone who's interested. Uh, involved and try to make this thing happen because it's the it's the real fun LL format if you ask me. And what's <clears throat> what's really cool, I think also about it is because uh, just the heroes down there in the depths are just so unique. Like mm -hmm. you know, you can explore different cards you know, that you need, uh, which is cool. Like, uh, Isaac packed in nasty surprise, uh, just in case like he, something got discarded or whatever. I mean, he, he thought it worked against assassin, but assassin like banishes all of your stuff. So it doesn't actually work, but it's like, you can start to think about like those cards, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, and like after the tournament, I was like, man, how else do I tech this uh, Arachne deck? I'm like, well, defense reactions are so bad against Riptide because of Dreadbore. Like, I guess I could use test of strength and like make gold tokens or something, or maybe not even make gold tokens, but just have like a, a zero for four card that blocks that isn't a defense reaction. So that then, you know, I can maybe recoup some of that value uh that i need or something like that you know so it's cool i recommend you go to your lgs and say hey could we do one day this month of living lurkers and let's promote that and just like those are the rules and then you bring those heroes and uh yeah let's play that absolutely <clears throat> i think you know zooming out on the whole experiment number one big success yeah number two i think we all agreed that the idea to keep track of wins and give points was a mistake that didn't seem like one until later on um, at least to me but uh that was mostly just because like i wanted to give stuff you know we had some stuff that we had been given as a podcast like yeah some, we had a prize wall. boxes and we wanted to give some stuff away to the, the people who care and support us. Um, so I think in the next version, we'll probably just do a random giveaway. Won't keep track of stuff so it can feel just more loose. Cause there was a couple of times where it was like, Oh, well, we should, we, we got to wait for so-and-so because we, everyone needs to be able to play and like whatever. So <clears throat> learning there was that the, the just habit and mindset of like assigning points and like keeping track of those things is so ingrained 
into how we engage with this game yeah that it happens even like on an you know sub subconscious level of like oh yeah of course we'll just do this so that we can we can do that because that's fun and it's just like oh wait no that actually brings a different vibe to everything uh for some people um i think for myself i i didn't care because i was trying to give stuff away so i wasn't trying to earn any of it uh but uh i think it is very easy to skew your own experience in that way even when your goal is to not do any of that so i think that was that was a really interesting kind of observation to kind of come away with it's like even when we're trying to like do just like fun casual thing we brought our own level of competitiveness to it which didn't really need to be there um so you know if anyone else but i think one layer of that that i've never done at a game store that i really enjoyed at hype house was the idea of yes we're getting points for this but i'm two beers in yeah and this shit is fun yeah and if you're sober look away or if you're vegetarian look away there there's pickles (laughs) but like that there was like the idea of i'm just gonna get a shitload of popcorn real quick while this person's blocking or like i know this person's about to take 10 minutes picking this draft cube thing so like (laughs) anybody want beers anybody want beers anyone who want beers and like Oh, there was an edible that I was on. Like, am I am I not thinking clearly? And like, <laughs> no, th- at no, <laughs> at no point. I don't want to go. No, no, no point. Like, we did team, where it was picked. Oh yeah. I I'm a guardian. I'm on guardian team. Uh, we each open up seven, wait, six packs or whatever of heavy hitters and make decks for each one I of think those. We, did was we do eight? nine or eight? We did whatever the website, yeah, Team Seal, whatever the website said. We did official LSS, which felt we wanted one more pack or whatever. I remember that, but like that—that that was just fun. Of like, I'm my, I'm a beer and a half in. I'm not thinking about every point in decision, but like this is for a point on the wall. So like, even though we're saying how sad that we made it competitive, I think this is the least competitive competitive thing, yeah, yeah ever. Totally. Because yeah. a you can't you can't bring beers to Odyssey Games yet unless yet. Uh, but like <clears throat> it was definitely fun for that. The other thing that I think was super fun was like there was a couple streams for Flesh and Blood because there was a calling. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect there was weekend. an an Arcane Games events. There was basketball, and it was like if you're really not feeling it or like. No, I want to go. I'm going to go play in the living room, which is five feet away. But, like, I can see the TV closer, and, and there's a game with pudding on. I really want to see what pudding's doing in this scenario. Oh, as I'm playing my own game, I can watch a professional player play in the calling round 35. And it mm-hmm. was like, like, that's also not at the game store most of the time. Of, like, I need to focus on this game because it matters. I want my $40 promo. Or... I, I need my ProQuest invite. Like, there's not going to be a stream or beers on Sunday tomorrow when I go play a ProQuest. And, like, maybe that was the layer that made this so fun. Because even going on Tuesday, which, which kind of sucks. I'm about to complain about something. Not complain. <laughs> I'm about to say my opinion. But, like, we talked to a lot of people at this thing. There was nine of us. And some of these people, I didn't really realize how they consume the game and how different it is for me. Of like some of these people only have five people in their local area, and like they they haven't drafted because draft really sucks with five. We would need a sixth, a seventh, and eighth, and like obviously you're not going to tie your girlfriend or your wife to a chair and make her play for you, but like maybe that's an option and and miss fail or something. They can transcend, but like um, <laughs> it was just something where the these people are having mind. fun in a different way. And, like, I'm complaining sometimes when I have, like, a 20-person armory of, like, there's a lot of people. And, like, maybe I'm going to realize that other people consume this and I'm going to be like, oh, the little guy, not that you guys are little, but, like, the people that don't have enough people around. They're all quite tall. (laughs) Are consuming it differently. But, like, when I went to my armory on Tuesday with nine people, nine people, like, there was nine at Hype House, nine people armory 
it was the most competitive people at my locals, which makes sense because there was the Arcane Games events. There was ProQuest coming up. So it was like fatigue where like the people that have fun playing the game weren't, weren't showing up. I don't know why, but it was like some of the nine most competitive people. And I got obliterated on a fun deck that I brought. And in my mind, I was like, oh my God, has Hype House ruined Flesh and Blood for me? <laughs> because like all I am wanting is the, the, the exact experience I had two days ago. And I don't even know where I'm going with this anymore. But like it is interesting to see all those different things of like, yeah, invite the person from Minnesota that you met at Battle Hardened Vegas to your Hype House get some different flavor, get some different new blood. Don't play against just the seven people you know. Mix it up, blah, blah, blah. Like, I think if I do another Hype House, of course I want to, it would be like a thing where, could it get up to 16? Is that too crazy? Do we stop at eight? No, the more the merry. But like, having enough where you could break up and do teams or like there's this guy from Minnesota. I don't know why I'm fixated on Minnesota, but like the people from Sweden came in or something would be insane. Instead of just eight random people from Los Angeles Odyssey, I wouldn't want to do a pipe house with just those eight. We do that every week. So it's like, it's fun because the format changes, but also get some different people than you normally play and you can see how they play the game. You can see their favorite cards. It was interesting seeing someone like in Living Lurker, we had a Guardian main, a Warrior main, and Blake is the Brute main, who were all maybe playing their Brute, their class of the only one that could be in Lurkers. Where it was like, he loves Warrior so much, the only Warrior he can play in this is Olympia. He's going to try and play Olympia. And that was Thomas. Betsy, blah, 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 blah. I don't know where we started with this, but I'm going to stop talking now. <laughs> yeah, I, I think go ahead, expanding Colin. your horizons is a great idea, and I think that's what happened. It was just, <clears throat> you know, we... I realized, too, in this whole thing, it's like I know all of these people who were here. I have not spent this much time with everybody, <laughs> which was like, it's like, oh, yeah, we really don't know each other as well as we sometimes think because we're always just engaging like on the kind of competitive level being at events together and seeing each other in those those kind of contexts so kind of like living all together was like a very different and interesting thing um my only thing on a 16 person hype house is like i don't know how to cook for 16 people i was surprised that we had enough food every time I made food. I was like, there's no way this is enough, <laughs> but it, it would work out. Or it was like, this is a crazy amount of food and we'd eat <laughs> all of it immediately. <laughs> it was like, uh, but it was, it was super fun. And like, I love just being with everybody and, and, you know, personally I love like hosting and stuff. So it was, I had a lot of joy yeah. of just like cooking food and, and making a nice, space for everyone to be in together huge shout out to you colin because you did so much of the uh behind the scenes stuff and all the legwork and stuff and you are definitely mr hype house uh so i really appreciate that and i know everybody who went feels the same way so thank you so much i now say that publicly here to the internet thank you from the bottom of my heart and the bottom of my feet prove it Showing show them feet. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> oh, he doesn't even. The guy who's talking hey. about socks doesn't have socks on. Oh my god, we just <clears throat> we just broke the internet. I'm gonna clip that. That'll be our first and only clip on our YouTube. Is <laughs> just you guys <laughs> showing your feet. <laughs> no, no thank you. It was it was a lot of work. Uh, it was totally worth it, and we had so much fun. So thanks everyone who came. And if you have any questions on what we did, how we did it etc i mean you know it was it, it, i literally planned it the same way i've planned my own bachelor party and some <laughs> bachelor parties i've done with some friends where it's just like let's just get a house we're gonna cook a bunch of food we're gonna hang out we're gonna you know ingest imbibe some things and alter our experiences and have a great time <laughs> and we did which so, we did yeah. we did all that stuff 
so far it's it's never failed me so um it's a good it's a good format for hanging out and being with people that you like and care about so that was i think that was the hype house except oh board game time that's true we have a special edition of board games from the hype house our new segment that will be a once yearly thing where we talk about <laughs> the board games that we we played at at Hype House, which uh, not as many as I thought we might play, but <clears throat> maybe just enough in the end. Uh, you want me to so, say my spiel about board games real quick? Yeah, you say up? your spiel. One thing I've always said to new players to get into Flesh and Blood is are you a person that wanted to play board games in your previous life, but you got board games for your friends? You were the one reading the rules. Nobody's paying attention to you. You're going crazy. You're playing against them on the board game. You beat them. They go, what the hell? You didn't say this. And you're like, I, it was on page four. I clearly read it to you. What the hell are you talking about? All those people go play flesh and blood on Tuesdays. And they're all the people that probably read the board game rules. I'm one of them. Colin's one of them. We can say, I don't know if Taylor reads rules or I not. I am. I am. So all of those people are now in a room and a hype house that like, of course, let's play the most insane hard board game you have because this is the crew that would be, I'm listening and like, it's not the pro leagues of this stuff, but like, I'm not going to sit down with Millennium Blades with anybody who doesn't have a college degree in board game design. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> it's definitely, and you know, rolling right into it, Millennium Blades, the, one of the games I was most excited and specifically purchased because of the Hype House uh, is a CCG simulator board game. Definitely better played with people who both understand CCGs and are familiar with uh, board game rules because there was a lot going on and it was i don't know it was it was crazy but also so much fun basically the breakdown is you have a deck building and collector phase that's real time you put on a timer and then everyone buys you can buy booster packs you can trade cards with other people you can sell cards in the aftermarket there's a meta that you're building your deck to you can also build the collection and cash that in for points then you're building your deck the whole time as well to play in the next phase which is a tournament and then in the tournament you play your deck out and you have like a deck box and a couple accessories that have actions on them um <clears throat> very interesting kind of uh, approach to simulating like a tournament where everyone's kind of playing just against each other and they play out their cards that are it's a lot of take that like okay everyone flip your card face down and it's just like damn it i need that card to score points later um or it's like oh no i can use my deck box to prevent you from flipping my card over uh, and then Blake played the worst card ever called Dr. Balance that made everybody that started like a chain reaction where everyone had to flip a card over and then tell someone else to flip a card over, uh, <laughs> which I spitefully just kept sending back to him until we both had no cards face up. <laughs> which was Dr. Really Balance is like, what, what's interesting too is it's clearly a Hearthstone reference because it's Dr. Boom, the exact person. He's balancing a bomb and money. And I literally only played it because the flavor text was so funny. Yeah. When a card is this balanced, you pretty much have to play it. And it was like, <laughs> all right, you're right. Like, let's, yeah. let's light this one on fire. And like, I, I don't know if this is going through your head, Colin, because this is what's going through my head. And I don't, I don't know how to turn this stuff off. I don't know if it's anxiety. I don't know if it's whatever, but like, I'm only going to play Millennium Blades maybe five times in my life because you have to be in a hype house scenario. You have to be r around people. I don't know if we could find two other people in LA that could wor work with Jake and I, or Jake, Jake, Colin and Blake. I don't know why I said Jake and I, that was weird. Um, find two more people to millennium blaze where we all have free time. We have a table where people aren't like coming home and like, Hey, what's going on? I, I, I want to watch. And you're like, no, no, no. I, I, don't pay like I have to be paying attention and like <laughs> it was like okay I'm only probably gonna do this twice 
am I going to talk about how cool this would have been or am I just going to rip it? And it was like, rip it. And Colin was like, you fucker. Because I think in his mind, he was doing, I'm only going to play this game maybe five times. I have a really cool combo set up. And it just shat on all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I I hope I play it more than five times. I think it's a pretty great game. Um, but yeah, it was, it was so funny because I was like so mad, but I was having so much fun also. Like it, it was like a thing where I like, I was worried that Blake was maybe concerned that I was really mad at him, but I like I was upset because it was like all my <laughs> points are going away, and I'm just gonna like pet, be petty and just like you know flip all your cards over. And so, but like, and then I just wouldn't stop mentioning. I'll probably never stop mentioning Doctor Balance. I think it's hilarious. It was just like a meme moment in real life. Um, so, as the person on the outside not playing that game, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know how to describe it. Four grown men with piles of cards and stuff everywhere, and I have no idea what's going on. And nobody smiled the entire game. Like, as you guys were playing it, you guys couldn't finish it in the night. You had to play it again the next morning. Nobody was smiling. People were, it was so intense. People were standing up around the table. Like, multiple people had to stand to play because it was like, you guys were so into it. And I was like, this does kind of look like fun, but the insane focus you have, we are like, I, I, I can't talk to you right now. I can't answer that question. Like we're, it's the marketplace right now. It's time. Like we can't talk, you know, <laughs> was good. you kept was coming nuts. up being like, Hey, blah, blah, blah. And they were just like, <laughs> totally. dude, stop talking. I'm trying to read like a hundred cards all at once and decide <laughs> yeah. if I'm trying to build this water collection or build an air deck. And also do I need to trade in these things for a promo? And does yeah, anybody totally. have this card? <laughs> like, <laughs> it was, it was so funny. It was just like the sweatiest vibe all weekend. Yeah. Was it really, it, it, it really does capture like like a feeling, you know, like the the game itself isn't CCG. There's not that much depth to it, but like the feeling of it was like definitely competitive CCG style even in like the the deck building phase and like, you know, it definitely rewarded people who knew how to like put a deck together, um <clears throat> which is something I'm just bad at and, you know, I I was mostly mad that like when Blake flipped all my cards over that, like, <laughs> I was just like, damn it. Like this, I don't even know if this deck was good. If like they had all been face up and I could have done something. It's like the combos I had were so basic, but, uh, it was, it was funny. And like, maybe we weren't smiling on the outside, but that's cause we were just intensely focused and there's yeah. there yeah. so much information going on. It's just like, Did- but I could see, I, you know, I could see playing that and you kind of learn what cards are in there and kind of what the, how the tournaments play out so you're like okay these are the things i need to worry about because when you're just doing it you're like i don't know what anything does and then you're like someone flips they're like i do this and you're like what the fuck do you do what are you talking about where did that come from (laughs) who the hell is dr balance (laughs) (laughs) have you talked to levi yet either no i I won't because uh he 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 still doesn't know how many he still doesn't know how many points he has (laughs) but he swear he had the most uh which was also would he count count it four w- times and have four was, different scores yeah <laughs> i this has happened this is a board game thing that happens with like hey i think i did miscount my victory points and you'll go back and be it'll be a difference between like 92 and 96 when we when levi said i think my thing is off let me count again i think it was the difference between i said 92 but it's actually 165 and we're like <laughs> How did you not get 70? Like, what happened, brother? And, like, it was so funny. Yeah. I have a, we have a house rule that if we're going to drink and play board games, if you forgot, you forgot, bro. Yeah. Because we're not, we're not going back and recounting. And if you're going to get too wasted to keep track of your shit, this was in the morning, though, when we tallied these up. (laughs) Totally. But I think that's one of the things you guys were. (laughs) One of the things I didn't like in the game components is that you use these little cubes on like a scoreboard thing and they, there was nothing to like keep them on there. And I think yeah. they could easily move. So that, that part was a little iffy, but you know, nothing, nothing too bad. I think overall a super fun game, definitely play it with people who get the jokes of the whole game and you know, are 
into kind of an intense couple hours, but I thought I thought it was awesome. And then I think Excellent. Th- the second best game we played was Heat, right? Mm. Yeah, Heat was dope. Yeah, Mitch loves that game. Yep. So he And that's when you're a race car. Yeah, Heat's a race car around. race car racing game, uh card based. Uh and you do a lot of really interesting stuff where you can like you're managing your heat, which can blow up your car basically, but also you can use it to kind of squeak around turns faster than maybe you should have gone you can use it to kind of like jump a gear uh and so you're kind of managing your deck and there's like heat cards in there and then you know trying to really nail how far you're gonna go so it's like you don't go around a a two mile an hour cur a turn at like you know well, not mile an hour, but like a two point curve with like an 11 point move. Cause then you just burn like nine heat and you just explode your car and go all the way back. So it was like really interesting kind of push your luck and uh, the hand management deck management game where you're like jostling for speed and you could also slip stream. So it was like, it was really fun. Same guys who did flam rouge, which I think we've talked about previously yeah. on the podcast, but like, you know, very, it felt like you know it, it's a good racing game it feels like racing like the whole time you're like oh shit i gotta get i gotta get in there and then you're like oh i'm up in front and you're just like damn it everyone passed me and i hit the turn at the wrong point so now i'm like stuck for two turns trying to get around this shitty like hairpin <laughs> turn <laughs> but yeah it was good uh i think jake ended up winning even though i feel like mitch kept introducing games and then like beating us at them what was the other <laughs> game we played I played Shards of Infinity with a few people. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, that's one is, I didn't want to. I didn't get to play, but I wanted to. Oh, dang. We'll have to play sometime. Yeah, it's yep. just a deck builder, um, but it's like a one-on-one deck builder. Uh, so it's like it kind of just captures the vibe of being able to play limited in any kind of generic card game. So there's like combos as you build your deck and... A bunch of different strategies and that sort of thing and it's just it's really fun it's great because you get i like it because it's just like one deck i it fits in like a kind of larger deck box uh and it, so you can like travel with it really easy and it's just like boom you shuffle it and you can just sit down and play and you get and it scratches that like itch of i kind of want to play cards but i also don't want to like play this deck i spent weeks developing to just like spend 30 minutes and lose to my bad matchup you know so you get to just play cards Mm -hmm. and not have that so that's uh really fun yeah we also played skull and cockroach poker which are both great bluffing games uh, that apparently Mitch was just a pro at cockroach poker. We couldn't get that guy to have a card in front of him forever, but I think we have also talked about <coughs> cockroach poker before because I've played that a lot recently. Um, super easy game. Uh, that was a everybody... great icebreaker too, to yeah. start off the weekend, I feel like. Yeah, because you gotta kind of get, you kind of have to learn to read people and you, you learn about them by trying to, figure out if they're lying to you or not which is very funny um and skull is a similar one we also played suro which is like a fun little path making game where you, it felt kind of like you're on a roller coaster because you someone would play a path and then all of a sudden your character is just like looping around the whole board and you're like am i about to fly off the board no okay i'm over here so that was a fun quick game so uh i also just remembered that uh levi brought his yorick upf Oh yeah, uh, deck which is just like, you know, the four heroes with York. So the whole deck just gets shuffled together, and the funniest things are happening. Like, what did Jake do? He had like a Kadachi, a, a Kadachi for eleven with like an <laughs> Iron Song response, like three Iron Song responses on it. And it's like what yeah. the every day and day I'm just like, what the hell is going on yeah. over there? Yeah. What was it crazy was is Isaac had defense reaction for everything everyone was always like all right well isaac's toast and then you'd be like staunch response red block it all have a (laughs) have a card to swing and the only thing where you're like well how does this all make sense uh levi said well i'm gonna be yorick but i'm gonna play the iron palms iron hands silver 
silver palms. iron home pans. Silver and palms. It was like um, that keeps everything going because you get an extra card if you're lower life, and that helps you not only block but attack. And I was Dory, and I I ended up winning, but I only like swung Dawnblade like three times, so it was it was kind of a sit in the corner, hope nobody realizes who, that you have a alliance with Levi, but then he died first, which was crazy after all that alliance. So it was like. Well, like I everyone instantly, was like, I made a secret alliance with you to kill Isaac just right away, and I instantly forgot as it came around to my turn. <laughs> and oh, I, I saw that, yeah. I know, and I gave you <laughs> eyes across the table of apology, and I, I want to apologize again that I forgot. Don't worry. And yeah. all's well that ends well. It sounded so much fun. Just the things everyone was saying was just like, what the? What the hell is going on over yeah. there? It was like it, it was like okay, it, this is this is fun. I I appreciate that uh, Levi put that together for everyone Cause, to play. Because Yorick's deck is potions, lives of the party, and like weird stuff. So those interactions, like I guess he's the deck with slogisms too. So like. Literally, when we got to the nitty gritty through all of the health, it was blues on blues on blues to who's going to win or not. And it was like, did anybody save a red in their arsenal to do something, or who's got the best? And, and it the was pitch like, stack mattered. Yeah, it was crazy in, in everybody's one deck. Yeah, Levi has been doing a good job, like kind of curating that. Like before, when we played it, it like took forever because. There was defense reactions, but no attack reactions. So you just like couldn't kill anybody. And so now it's just like at a better level. And and yes, we know Silver Palms is not a barred piece of equipment. It's merchant only. But whatever the, whatever we're doing, whatever the fuck we want over here. We're having fun. Get out of here. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. So just, man, so many games. And we played some Street Fighter too. <laughs> and thing. we got hailed on. Dude, yeah, first thing happened was we got hailed on. Did not get to use the pool. It was way too cold. Uh, we drove next... through the snow to get to the hype That's house. True. You guys it snowed didn't through make it. all <laughs> of Mendocino County. <laughs> the night wild. we drove up, which is crazy. Which is crazy because we were playing Tales of Aria before you got there. So we it's were true. snowing at ice. the hype house. Ice. All Watch right. Watch out for that ice. All right. Let's wrap this thing up. Uh, thanks. Thanks, everybody, for listening. I appreciate that. If you want to go to next year's Hype House, join our Patreon. Start paying us now. <laughs> Pay us now, <laughs> and we'll get you on the guest list. Uh, it was a great time. I look forward to ProQuest season now. Blake, good luck tomorrow. Colin, good luck. Good luck to me. Good Not luck good. to everybody else. It's great. Have fun, though. You guys have fun. Yeah. Good luck. Drive safe. Where's yours tomorrow, Blake? The Game Seller. Nice. Hell yeah. Well, good luck to you. Thank you, everyone. And uh, happy gaming. Goodbye. Happy gaming. Happy gaming. Happy gaming. Happy gaming. Happy gaming. Happy gaming. Goodbye. I have to go to the rest.